Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cleaning Redville, a job simulator type horror game in which we are tasked with playing as a sanitation worker picking up the garbage in a small town in the middle of the woods. Now, I'll be honest, this sounds like my kind of job, and it definitely sounds like my kind of game. Redville, 1976. All right, we're plopped right in, and it seems like this is doing the faux retro PS1 style graphics. I am so drawn to these games. Ah, seems like I end up playing these even when I'm not trying to. All right, let's pick up the garbage. Ooh, there's garbage bag physics and everything. <laughs> That's interesting. All right, and I guess I'm probably going to have to throw them in the back of the truck, right? Oh no, that lever compresses the bags. But then, how do I... Ah, oh, I have to open you this way. Pick you up. Toss you in. And it says four bags left. Now, I imagine that I'll probably be getting that number down once I fully compress them. Uh, I saw red over here. I thought there may be something in the bushes. Those of you who have been with my channel for a while know that I absolutely love job simulators with a horror twist to them. Because I feel like it adds such an air of, if not plausibility, then at least relatability. Everybody has to go to work, and when you do something like the night shift, I don't know, I feel like you'll think back to games like this while you're actually at work. I, I feel like good horror is the kind of thing that lingers with you. Three bags at a time. Okay, why was this stapled to a post? Stupid trees trying to tell me how to do my job. All right, now can I open this garbage bag? Oh, I have to pull it from behind. All right, and bring it over here and dump it in the back. That should be uh, empty the truck before dumping. So if I close this and compress the bags, compress the one that's in there, which seems like a waste of time, You'd think I'd be on a schedule. We bring this over here and dump it in. And that's three more bags, which will mean that we've gotten the four that are total here. Let's leave you over here. Or I'll do the I'll do my job correctly. Bring you back to the checkpoint. And leave you where I found you. Listen to those crickets. The starry night. The way the headlights project onto that sign and sharply fall off a few feet down that dark wooded road. It's the little things that really make you feel like you're in a game. And immersion is such a big deal in horror. You have to feel like you're there, and you need those little details to recall when you find yourself in a similar situation. Because you don't have to be a sanitation worker in order to recall aspects of this game. I feel like any little detail can trigger memories, and once you get scary thoughts in your head, they're with you the entire time. It's like when I go for walks in the morning. Ooh, we're actually going to get to drive the truck. It's like when I go for walks in the morning. I, I can be totally fine, but as soon as I start thinking, what if someone was staring at me from one of these windows, or what if someone's following me from the shadows? Uh, I'll be on edge for the entire rest of the trip. Ah, oh, I see. It's not just job simulator horror. It's driving horror. Oh, I love this, because I find driving at night, even though I don't drive myself, I find road trips in the dark to be so comfy. But the way things constantly appear on the edge of your headlights, it definitely keeps you on edge. Knowing that if something were to be watching you from out there, you wouldn't see it until long after it sees you. Bit of a sharp turn here. And this thing definitely wants to pull a little bit to the right. Welcome to Redville. Where's my first stop going to be? 
You know, I'd actually never thought of this premise for a horror, but it really is great. Getting up in the early hours of the morning? The only one awake when the world is still asleep. Doing a job that most people won't even see you do. And if anything were to happen to you, who would even notice except for the ones who find your abandoned truck? The music certainly wants me to be on edge, I'll tell you that much. Alright, let's take you over here and dump you into the back. I guess I just drive around until I see garbage. But, you know, the thing about job-based horror is that I feel like there's something to the repetition. I mean, I say this in every Job Simulator-style video, but I think games need to give you that repetition so that you settle into a routine so that you notice the deviations from that routine. That's those compressed. It's very quick, which is good. Grab you. <laughs> I cannot get over the jiggle physics on these bags. Boing, 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 boing. And to the people just listening, yes, I am still playing a garbage collector game. Will that be all? I think so. I don't see any others around. And I think that's my next stop right up there at the corner. Oh, look at the way the... Look at the way the air freshener dangles in the cabin. Uh, two bags left, so it will block me from continuing until I've completely cleared an area. There's one bag here, but where's the other? Uh, right over there, I think. Alright, we do have a little bit of an ability to sprint for picking up the pace if need be. Now the question is whether that's to cut down on my impatience or if I'll have to use it to run from something at some point and... Another note's been left for me on a post. Ignore the awful smell. I'm a garbage man, I'm used to it. You know, I remember when I was a kid, they used to say, like, Oh, you know, you gotta do well in school, you don't want to end up a garbage man. First of all, somebody's gotta do it. And two, don't they make bank? It's a really dangerous job, and I'm pretty sure they are actually compensated really well. Let's take this corner. Uh, it's actually really difficult to make these corners. It's a bit clunky. Not clunky, actually. Uh, the driving is actually really, really smooth. It's just kind of difficult to make those turns. Did you hear that? I thought I just heard, like, a clicking, but I couldn't discern where it was coming from. Oh, it's the light post is flickering. Okay. Pick you up. And I can see at least two more further down the road. You know, there's something really eerie about having this take place on an early morning in the suburbs. I mean, I, I feel completely isolated and alone, even though I should be surrounded by people right now. And nice job having little textures on the bottom of the windows, because I, I was just looking up at them with the sudden feeling that I was being watched. Of course, on a morning like this, you'd never be able to tell. The creepy thing about windows when I go for walks in the morning is that I just know that with the streetlights outside, I'd never be able to see inside a window, but anyone looking out can see me. It's a really eerie feeling knowing that you can be watched and never know it. Now, there must still be at least one bag left because this thing is not going anywhere. Six bags left. Oh, it's a can. Of ketchup. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's actually pretty brilliant, though, because when you do this kind of job, when you're all on your own, you'd probably start to feel kind of bored to the point where you might be kind of desperate for a mystery, wouldn't you? I can see myself coming up with a whole narrative in my head 
when really there's a very simple explanation. I see that stain on the ground and I almost get kind of excited. I'm practically disappointed when I see that it's a simple ketchup bottle and there's no real danger. And I kind of feel like I should pick it up and toss it in the trash, but I guess I'm not paid enough to bend my knees. I have to crush it down before I do this. Crush, crush, crush. I feel like this must be, for somebody like me, besides the solitude, besides getting to work alone, besides the comforting repetition, I feel like this would just be really satisfying to me. I mean, I'm somebody who really loves viscera cleanup detail. Just because I like the idea of taking a destroyed location, not destroyed, but just taking a messy location and slowly making it pristine, seeing that progress as I go. I guess my brain is just suited to tasks like this. I love the ever-present sound of the crickets and the low rumbling of the engine as I roll forward. I mean, the inside of that cabin just feels so cozy, like I could lay across the seats and take a nap in there. <gasps> I don't want to approach to pick up that bag. I, I mean, I didn't get a good look. I suppose it could just be someone tossing out their trash last minute, but... Now that looked like quite a long, stretchy arm. It's a trap. I know it is. <laughs> oh, come on, I didn't get it. <laughs> In a situation like this, I'd start to wonder if my boredom wasn't causing my mind to play tricks on me. I mean, that tends to happen to me when I'm bored, but... Also, I did pick up a bag that certainly wasn't there before. Or maybe I just didn't notice it? These are the kind of thoughts that would be going through my head. Let's dump the rest. And that should... I'm just being nice. Do I actually have to deliver these back to the location I got them from? I mean, mechanically, I could probably just leave them in the middle of the road, right? If I wanted to be really inconsiderate. But I think that should be it, yes. Keep an eye on that alley as we pass. See, I feel safe in here. I don't know if that safety is misplaced, but... Something about sitting in the cabin of a vehicle, I feel so insulated from the outside world. I think that's why night drives are so comfy. I mean, walking down a deserted country road in the middle of the pitch dark night, that wouldn't be fun. That would be scary. I'd be looking around at every snapping twig and chirp of a slightly louder bird, but in the cabin of a vehicle, I don't even care if the thing rolls to a stop and the lights go out. I'll still lay down and fall asleep. I'm sure it's fine. The Ninja Turtles just returning to rest after a night of crime fighting. I'm actually safer because of that. There were all sorts of ruffians roaming these streets only moments ago, and the Ninja Turtles put them right in their place and gave them a lesson about civic responsibility or something. I don't know. Close that, compress it. I don't remember if I already did or not, but I'm gonna run over here and grab the next one. There's three bags to a garbage can, which means there's probably a loose bag around here somewhere. Although, the fact that I haven't spotted it yet kind of makes me think that it will be arriving dramatically on the scene. In which case, I may have to jump into the truck in a hurry in order to get out of here. And 
even a sprint function, and the fact that I do have a vehicle at my disposal... I do wonder if I'll have to run at some point. Now where's that last garbage bag? Hello? Ah, back there. I don't like being this far from the truck. Or this close to the woods. I heard that. I heard that, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that. Uh, run, 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 run. Toss it in the back. Close. Compress. Jump in the cabin. And away we go. I really appreciate this slow burn. I don't like what the soundtrack is doing right now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm just... I'm having trouble commentating because I'm just so focused anytime I get close to the woods. I feel like something's going to be coming from there. Also, I just realized I haven't even been paying attention. Have I been missing... Have I been missing notes at each of these stops? Were they hiding from you? Yeah, it kind of seems like they have been. Oh no, there is one back there. I have to go back. I don't like this one bit. Don't like this one bit. Now I feel like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to. Were they hiding from something? Oh, so t in order they would be... Were they hiding from something? Were they hiding from you? Well, if they're hiding from me, that's good for me, right? Although, one of them put out a garbage bag, so I guess they do still have sanitation needs to be taken care of. Perhaps I can leverage that. When it comes time to negotiate for my survival with the leader of the Ninja Turtles. These people are a bunch of pigs just scattering their garbage bags every which way. Alright, let's drop these in. Remember, I can take three at a time, which means it's probably smarter to start with the ones farthest away from the cabin, in case I have to make a mad dash inside. Of course, I don't actually know if there's going to be any danger or not, but I like to be prepared just in case. Both from the gameplay perspective of I don't want to die, and from the let's play perspective of it's always anticlimactic if you die in the first encounter. <laughs> oh my god, it got me with a literal cat scare. I am a protagonist in an 80s horror movie. Ah, oh, that legitimately stopped my heart, and it even had a little cute piano tinkle to go along with it. Oh, I'm sorry, kitty. <laughs> Alright, uh, how long until we can get out of here? Two bags left, which means we should be able to get out of here with this. There's another note on the post up ahead. From now on, I'm just going to be really wary of garbage bags next to manhole covers, because now that we know whatever they are, they can get down there. I'm going to be fearing a trap. In fact, there's a lot of things that I'm fearing as traps right now. Dark side alleyways, woods with no fence, and manhole covers. Add doorways to that list as well. Let's throw this last one in there. Let's throw that one in there and have a read of the note. You're good at this. Thanks, it's my job. I feel like I just heard something on my left, but it was very, very faint. Uh, this garbage can's been knocked over. Seems this town has something of a raccoon problem. That's it. Nothing but raccoons.
That's a big old knife. Uh, should I maybe pick that up and use it to defend myself? Because if this were me, I would say, okay, it's not stealing because someone clearly threw it out. And nobody's gonna mind if I carry it with me in the cabin, right? I mean, right? Of course, it could also be... Let me just uh, crush this down real quick. I actually don't know if uh, if sanitation workers are allowed to go scavenging. I mean, I feel like as long as it doesn't interrupt their schedule, it should be fine, right? I mean, if it's fine for me to go around and scavenge what's on the side of the road... You can actually get some pretty good stuff that way. There's something over there. Hello, Mr. Midgard Ghost? Yes, I see you. And clearly you see me. Are you just putting your trash out, or... Are you guarding it? Because that makes a huge difference in how I approach the rest of this job. You know, the more I play, the more I'm starting to think these are just the citizens of this town trying to have their garbage put out. So far, they haven't actually done anything to me that wasn't related to putting out trash bags. Wait. Oh. It was... definitely not just a post, but that's what the game wants me to think. So that was creepy. Um, a little bit of a criticism, though, in that... Stop with the flickering. A little bit of a criticism that I sometimes have with things that try to do that staring from afar scare. Which is, don't allow me to look at it for too long. I know that carries with it the possibility that I would look over and actually miss it, like it would be gone before I noticed it. But I feel like if you have enough such elements, it won't matter. I'll be bound to see something, and missing some scares is better than having the scares not be subtle enough. But... No. No, no, no. Okay, so... No, oh, it's, it's all the lights on the street. I'm not walking in the dark. I'm using this thing as a mobile flashlight now. Let's make this as quick as possible. I've actually wedged myself into a corner where I can't make my way around the right side of the truck, meaning I have to step back into the dark to deliver this. All right, dump in, dump in. I don't like my helplessness during this cutscene. I don't feel like that's gonna protect me. Drag this off to the side, just leave it on the corner because screw it at this point. Uh, grab you, drop this on the ground here. I can compress this all at once and throw this right in. Oh, I don't even need to close the lid to do it. Wish I'd known that earlier. And every time I turn around now, I can just feel the darkness at my back. Let's read the note. You're good at keeping a secret. Haven't had an opportunity to tell anyone yet. Let's move forward. Oh. When you push forward into the darkness like this, you never know what's going to be revealed at the edge of the beam. Only three bags left. <laughs> you know, I was actually somewhat critical in the beginning of the decision to have all these streetlights everywhere, but now that I've had them and had them taken away, I feel so much more vulnerable. Having them there in the beginning has actually worked to the game's favor by having a very notable contrast between before and after the streetlights go out. There's still one on, though. Just the one above this note, which means this is one that they wanted me to see. 
lying to your friends and family. Uh, is there some personal story here that I don't know about? Dump you in there. You know, at a certain point, I had actually kind of started to shed the malicious vibe that I was getting at first, but now, now that the streetlights have gone out, I'm right back to, I'm right back to red alert. You know, the worst thing would be somehow losing this truck. Because with both the indoor quality of the cabin and just the sheer weight behind this thing, and now the added comfort of being the only source of light in town, I've really come to view it as a source of comfort. If it were to take that away, I would have absolutely nothing. All right, let's crush that down. Grab you, bring it over. I want to be as efficient with my time as possible to prevent the possibility of something creeping up from behind me. Drop you in there. Close it down. Get a move on. Any bags on my right? No. There's one. And there's the roadblock. You know, I haven't actually questioned yet who's setting up these roadblocks. <laughs> Which is actually just a leading credence to the theory that these are a group of paranormal beings who are otherwise benign and want nothing more than to have their trash taken out in a timely fashion. Crush that down and we should be able to get out of here. I heard something that was not part of the regular crushing sound effect. A definite rustling from behind, but... I don't see where. I don't think I'm close to any exposed woods. Actually, was there a note there that I hadn't seen? Hang on, I'm going to reverse real quick just to take another look. You know what? I think it was the one that's around the corner. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else here. I think if there's a note, there will be a lit streetlight above it. really appreciate how silent it is, save for the sound of my own engine. Oh no, this streetlight is actually out. So just because there's a note on the streetlight doesn't mean that it'll be lit. I'm gonna have to keep an extra eye out from now on. Where did that come from? Dump it in. Dump it in. Come on, get a move on. The music is indicating that I need to hurry. Uh, uh, crush it, crush it, crush it. I want you to be empty when I get back here. We all know your secret. What is my secret? Crush, crush, crush. And move forward. Word. I didn't even see that happen. Did something fly out of the darkness and hit it? Okay, so what does ketchup have to do with my secret? Now that's a nice callback, Bo. Take something that what once seemed a benign false scare and turn it into something much more ominous and dangerous. There's a can on the side of the road. I'm noticing that there's starting to be larger and larger gaps between garbage collection locations, giving me more and more time with my thoughts as I progress down this pitch black road. It's almost like it wants me to really contemplate what's going on here and what exactly they know about me, whoever they are. You are living a lie. That I don't think that was there before I left the cabin. Unless I just didn't notice it. 
But I, I, I would have. I looked over at the garbage bag on the ground. All right, what else is there? I don't see any more. I can't read that sign from here either, so I'm just gonna continue to creep forward. One bag sounds good to me. I thought I saw something in that alleyway, but it's just a gutter. Just a drain. Right, close, compress, get in the cabin. And away we go. Now there's some street lights back on over here. Let's pull up to the side of the road. Now this is not taking this corner well. There's something in that one. All right, well, let's not activate the scare too early and ruin the surprise. Let's take the silent toucans first. Each one has to be compressed on its own. Crush one. Sorry, I'm just delaying my inevitable demise at the hands of whatever is in that bin. Um, Baru number two. And time to see what's inside bin number three. Oh, it was a mouse. Again. <laughs> I keep getting scared by animals. But what's on the note? You better hurry. It's getting red here. Uh, the only thing getting read here is that note. I use puns as a method of coping with the horror that I'm about to be killed. What? Hmm. It certainly is getting very red here. And the houses are becoming more and more sparse. Is that an indicator that I'm supposed to get out and investigate that house, or an indicator that I'm supposed to keep moving and not look back for anything? I don't see anything to indicate that I'm supposed to get out, so I'm going to go with keep going and don't look back for anything. In fact, let's pick up the pace. We are through town now. Ah, uh, never mind. No such luck. I thought we were finally getting out of this, but... It could just be the sameness of the houses, but wait, haven't we taken this exact corner already? Again, it could just be the repeat assets, but I feel like we've already seen this. Go, go, go. There's a note on that pole that I just noticed. Drop you off back here. I don't know why I'm still bothering to be polite in returning these bins. Drop you off over here, and in the meantime, we'll read the note. We won't hurt you. We need you. Is there actually real credence to my theory from before? That these dark figures that I've been seeing are really just the inhabitants of the town and just want their garbage taken away? Of course, they already hurt the windshield of my truck, so I'm not really taking their word for anything at this point. That comes out of my paycheck, you know. Are they trying to tell me to speed up? But they were no rumors. We murdered many people. Well, just come right out and say it, why don't you? Whatever that noise means, it me. Who are you? And more importantly, what happened? That was great! Holy cow, what a good thing!
what a good little trick. Uh, actually having him disappear while I round that corner piece. Oh, that is so cool. That must be really, really difficult to get right. Uh, I don't know if I've ever... Look, it, it's very common right now to have, like, okay, you see something and when you round the corner, it's gone. That's very common in horror games now. But I've never seen it done so seamlessly and smoothly before. Now it said the rumors were true. We murdered many people. I wonder if this town is supposed to have, like, some kind of story behind it. In fact, maybe what I'm dealing with isn't paranormal at all. Maybe what we have is just a little hick town in the woods that doesn't like outsiders. But it still depends on civil sanitation services. It seems like we're actually exiting the town this time. Yeah, we're back onto the road. Are we finally free? Goodbye, Redville. Uh, what's gonna happen? The silence is deafening. I'm more on edge than I've been the entire time. <laughs> oh. One bag left. Are you the bag? Is this my secret? Is this my purgatory? And I can't help but notice that that blood trail looks exactly like the ketchup bottle that was on the ground by those first garbage cans. But it's time to face your real job. I think this is my secret. Listen to that crunching sound. But now we have to move. No. No, the engine died. I can't move. No, 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 no. I can't get out either. Not that I'd want to. Although this cabin doesn't feel nearly as safe now with that big hole and crack in the window. What do I do? What can I do? Something's definitely coming for me. Oh. I can move again. But somehow that doesn't reassure me. Whatever, I just want to get as far away from here as possible. Any distance I can put between me and that town is good distance, right?
Redville Crematorium. Oh my, there is so much more going on here than I thought. They have revealed so much with that ending. Hang on, I'm going to have to take a moment to recontextualize all of this. So my thinking on this changed several times throughout that playthrough, which is very nice. I love a horror game that keeps you guessing about the nature of what's going on the whole way through. Now at first my thought was, okay, we've got a hick town in the middle of the woods that does not like outsiders, and they're going to mess with me. And then, when it became clear that I had some kind of secret, I kind of started leaning more into the whole, like, purgatorial lesson world thing that so many horror games have done. And then I thought it clinched it when I hit that pedestrian and I loaded them up, much like a sack of garbage, into the back of my truck. But then we get here, and remember, the note said, we need you for your real job. Redville Crematorium. So... Maybe this was, like, if we take this literally, maybe this was some way of, like, initiating me to what this service actually does, which is pick up and deliver corpses to the crematorium. Or maybe I'm reading too much into that and I'm completely off. I don't know. That's just such... That's just such a twist and a half, but I really enjoyed that. While it was a steady ramp-up of scares... It never actually abandoned that subtlety. The one thing I really criticized was that moment when I could see that figure in the distance, but I'm actually going to recant my criticism there. Because in my in getting lost on my paranormal speculation, I had completely forgotten that this is still a normal town, and there's no reason why there couldn't be somebody standing over that streetlight. It's only when you get over there and see, oh, it's just some object, some little uh, meter underneath it, that you start to think that your mind is maybe playing tricks on you. Like, the first somewhat scary thing we encounter on this job is that blood stain, which turns out to be a ketchup bottle on the ground. But at the end, when we hit that pedestrian, it's the same shaped stain on the ground. And then having that ketchup bottle thrown through the window, that's a really nice way. You know, it, that ketchup bottle seems like a false scare at first, but as it turns out, it's actually very important. Especially if we go through the whole purgatory narrative, where we assume that this is a manifestation of my guilt at having hit a pedestrian and covered it up. I mean, it really says a lot that the cabin of that truck felt like, at times, both a tomb and a safe place to rest my head. I really enjoyed that, and if you want to try it for yourself, I'll put the link down below in the description. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will also link in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.